That was One Night by synth-pop British band Tongues. Once likened to Four Brothers, the tight-knit group has created a smooth, synth-loaded soundscape, blending funk and disco grooves. And they've just released their debut album. It's called A Good Dream. You can see it right there. And uh, Nikki, Jamie, and Rick, we're lucky to have all three of you here to tell us more about it. Welcome uh, to France 24. Thanks for having us. And congratulations on your new album. It's so exciting to have a first album come out. Before we dive into talking about the songs, what is A Good Dream to you guys? You want to take it? Well, no, I think it, I think <laughs> it should be you. Basically, it's, for us, it's the dream in the sense of like a dream you might have in your life, something you want to do, and it's for like a way of living for us. It's like we decided to do this band because it was kind of a dream for us. So it's nice to release our first album with that sentiment that like we're doing this thing that's a nice like goal in our lives. So it's like a, a dream come true, if you will. <laughs> we'll see. That's for you to decide. Hopefully, not turn into a nightmare. So, uh, before releasing this album, you released a certain amount of EPs. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it feel like to graduate to a full-length album, especially since you guys do a lot of... Uh, it's pretty DIY, if I understand correctly. Mm. You do a lot yeah. of the producing yourself. Yeah. What's it like? It's great. It feels... Yeah, it's it's... It just feels like a natural progression. I think if you if you told us like three years ago that we had to make 11 songs and put them all out at the same time, it would have felt like an impossible task. But by the time we got to album time and it was like, yes, this is it, we're finally here. And and equally, all the different bits, yeah, as you say, have been progressing at the same time because we've been teaching ourselves and, and learning along the way. And I think it's all kind of culminated in like a, a thing. And it just feels like an event, which is nice. nice. For some reason, it's, it's different. It's more significant than a... Just an EP. Yeah, it's like a destination you've been aiming for. Yeah. You, finally, mm -hmm. you finally get there. Well, let's listen to another track off the record. It's called Always. Take a listen. So that was the song Always off uh, British band Tongue's uh, debut album, A Good Dream. So uh, you mentioned there are 11 tracks on this album. A lot of them deal with heartbreak, uh, it seems. Would you say that you guys are helpless romantics? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I think it's, uh, it's kind of a timing-based thing almost. I think that the songs, at least that I write, and I think probably Nikki as well, it comes from conflict, like the things that happen to you in your life that are dramatic and, and exciting. And maybe just based on the time that the songs were written, those were the kinds of things that were happening to us, I think. Yeah, I'd say. For my part, yeah. Because you mentioned that you you guys both write songs, so Nikki and Jamie. Mm -hmm. yeah. You both sing, and you sing as well, Rick. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. All, yeah. Uh, you're all uh, participating on this album. Uh, you've got very complimentary, versatile voices. What is your songwriting process like, though? Is it like, is there a leader on the songs, or is it a collaboration? I mean, I see it in isolation. It's like a Jamie song or a Nick song. Mm. Um, but then it comes together through the Tongues production engine, and then it's definitely a Tongues song in its mm. own right. But um, yeah, I guess originally they start separate. Mm. We'd make a demo, one of us, and, and produce it, and then we take it to the four of us in the band, and then Rick and Ollie will like make a groove underneath it. And we're kind of blending the like live recording of the rhythm section with all these synth and electronic elements that come in from the demos and from the production on the computer. So it's like a ends up going through the machine, yeah, exactly. and then uh, and then yeah. you get a tongue song in the end. Mm. So you've created this really soft uh, and soulful sound that's quite nostalgic, but also it's very danceable and fun at the same time. So it's interesting. There's like a lot of vulnerability and fun. Uh, what bands inspired you for this album? Well, well, I guess when we started, we were in Bristol. There was a lot of funk and disco music. We were going to lots of nights that were uh, playing things like James Brown and all like uh, this great band called The Silvers that I love from that era, that kind of synth and dancey. And we wanted to make dance music because we've always been playing dance music as a band, but then we didn't want it to just be lyrics about dancing. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people tend to <laughs> yeah. do that. It's repetitive, yeah. So exactly. I guess, yeah, maybe some of the, my indie uh, inspirations from when I was a teenager, yeah. like the Strokes and Arctic Monkeys and stuff, came through in my lyrics anyway, I don't know about you. Yeah, I think, or, or at least it's a, a slightly different perspective on songwriting than you might get normally with a kind of funk 
you know, like a groove-based song, which is just in order to make people dance. It, it's a, a vehicle for expression, you know, I think music is a way of just getting stuff out, and so we're making, we're trying to make groovy things that are enjoyable, but also you get a little added bonus of like, oh, it also gives, gives me an opportunity to tell people how sad I am. Yeah. <laughs> in a dancey way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because what's interesting is your friendship, you guys, the four of you in the band, uh, you've been friends for quite a long time, and it really comes across in your music. Can you tell us a little bit about how you met and how you started playing music together? Yeah, yeah, yeah so we, we met in Bristol. Yeah. Um, and we were playing in separate bands. Um, Jamie and I lived together. Yeah. Um, and then these guys lived together. Um, but we always played in other projects and groups. Um, and then towards the end of our time at Bristol, we um, formed Tongues. Um, and then, yeah, it's kind of been evolving since then. Um, but yeah, I started off as mates playing together in other projects, which is nice. So The first time we ever played together, it was because Rick and Nicky and Ollie were in a, a a different band and they were playing in the living room of our house and you needed a guitar you needed like a wah guitar like a yeah. like a funky like a wah. and i uh, and so i came downstairs in my pajamas and i played it <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. and he was in that's yeah. a great no. meeting story right? <laughs> yeah. it was meant to be yeah <laughs> so we're just going to move on to uh, some other music news that's uh, making headlines after playing all over the world including europe the US, uh, Canada, Brazil, South Korea, and Taiwan, just to name a few places. The Rodeo, which is the alter ego of the French uh, singer-songwriter Dorothée, she's released her fourth album, you can see it there. It's called Arlequin, and it features nine Baroque, complex, and catchy pop tracks uh, that give a serious nod to La Chanson Française and certain singers like France Gall and Françoise Hardy. Uh, check out this track, it's called Lime à la Moue. So that was the rodeo there. Uh, coming back to you guys, tongues. The music industry has really changed in the last couple of decades with the rise of streaming. Uh, as an um, uh, up and coming young band, what are your hopes and dreams these days? Has it changed since like, you know, I don't know, the early 2000s when there was a certain model? What's the model today? I think, I mean, in terms of like how people consume music, the value has really gone. And I think it's been like taken over by these people that don't really know about music or don't really care too much about the actual music. So I think for me anyway, what I want to do is be way more direct with fans. So there, there's a lot of industries that exist now that are kind of relics from when people used to sell physical music that aren't needed. So I think really my dream would be that you can just go straight direct to fans, people go straight, pay straight to the artist. I think that's surely the best way rather than everyone taking all the money along the way. And doing more, more direct things. connection with the fans. Yeah, and I think via the internet and yeah, everybody is, is empowered to be able to do that kind of thing. There is a there is a platform that anybody can access that, you know, as long as you're hopefully making good stuff and telling people about it, it that's feasible. You can you know, give things directly to people without the need for middle middle people. <laughs> and but there's still the hope to like tour and like Oh of course. You know, for sure. Yeah, I mean that's that's really the why, most direct. That's why we got into it, yeah. Is there is you know that, that direct live connection and, and getting people moving and Healing at the same time, yeah. <laughs> which is, which is, is great to do on your music in particular. <laughs> so moving on to uh, another band, this is a youth star and miscellaneous. Uh, this is the alliance between a French MC and an MC from London. They're releasing a new album, it's called Salvation. This is their third collaboration and it features 13 tracks, which will take you on a trip from upbeat topics like motivation and the quest for happiness to bleaker themes like addiction. Here's the track, Love Need Hate. So we're very lucky today because you guys are actually going to play us out with a track off your album. It's called 80,000. Uh, before you play, though, I want to thank you for being with us today on France 24. Be sure to check out Tongue's new album. It's called A Good Dream. For more arts and culture news, head to our website and stay in touch on social media and stay tuned to France 24. More news is coming up right after this. Three, four.
Michel, the Louvre, are well-known stars of French heritage. But French genius and France harbors many other hidden treasures. The arts, gastronomy, architecture, as well as nature's wonders. Come along with France 24. Discover France's living heritage. From young apprentices to accomplished craftsmen and farmers, to Michelin star sporting chefs, meet these people whose passion for their professions preserve and drive French heritage. You are here on France 24 and France24.com.